In this video, I want to show you how to connect to the new Pascal server we're going to use. So to use the new Pascal server, you do have to use the McMaster VPN. And to use the McMaster VPN, you can just Google McMaster Cisco VPN. So McMaster Cisco VPN. And the first link that comes up will be this one. You can click on it. And then you can click on this link here. And if you're located in China, then you're going to want to use this list here, you're going to want to go to how do I download VPN software and download the one for your system here. And then you can see the instructions for how to connect here. If you're not located in China, if you're located anywhere else, go down to the general student VPN and you can go here to download the software. How do I download the software? And you can go here for how to connect, but I'll show you right now. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go to Mac OS and I'll download it. You can punch in your Mac ID, username and password here to get the software and it'll download. And a VPN, if you, if you don't know what it is, a VPN will actually let your computer connect to McMaster's network as if it is on McMaster's network. So it's as if you've got your computer connected to the network on campus, essentially. And then you can access things that, you know, only computers on the McMaster network can access because your computer is on that network. So we'll just run this installer here. So just click on this, run the installer. I agree. And whatever it says you need, just say continue. Install it all. So whatever it says you need, just install it. And this will take whatever, however long it takes to install. Um, but the, the VPN basically, yeah, when you're connected to this, it's, it's as if you're on the McMaster network at that point. And the, uh, the Pascal server requires us to use this. So, okay, once it's installed, you might be able to go up here and just say like Cisco VPN, that might work. Um, or you might have to go to applications. So if you go to uh, applications and you go to Cisco and you go to this, uh, Cisco any connect secure mobility client and double click on that. That's what will let you connect to the network. So um, you can just punch in your username, which should already be there. And then you just punch in your password for the uh, network there and say, okay, accept. And then at this point you're now on the McMaster network and now you can connect to the Pascal server. And the Pascal server, you just are going to use the, uh, your regular Mac ID. So your Mac ID and your regular Mac ID password, the same thing you use for your email and mosaic and Avenue and all those things. It's the same, um, account name and same password to get to the Pascal, uh, server. So if I want to SSH to it, I just say SSH my Mac ID at, and then you say Pascal cas.mcmaster.ca and then punch in your password and now I'm on the Pascal server and if I do an LS I'll see that I've got nothing in there initially but I'm on the server there now if I were to say make dir public HTML so I've made a public HTML directory and then I were to CD into that directory I can see that directory is there if I were to CD into that directory what I can do is I can add files here and anything that I add here will be accessible at this URL here. So if I go to uh, pascal.cast.mcmaster.ca slash, and then the, the squiggly kind of symbol there, your Mac ID, anything you put in the public HTML folder will be accessible at this URL here. So this public HTML folder is basically mapped to this URL here. And so we, if we put that URL in here, I see that I have an empty folder here. If you don't make the public HTML folder first, it'll say something like, you know, uh, not authorized or something like that. But because I made the public HTML folder, I can, I can see what's here. If I make an, uh, if I make a, say, um, HTML file here, let's say I make a file here, uh, VI and I say, um, my file dot HTML and I just put some, some stuff in here. So just some text in here. Oops. Then if I do a refresh here, I've got that file there. If I click on it, 
I can see the contents there. So if I put HTML files in here and different things, I'll be able to access them on there. So that is one way of accessing the files on your server and, and manipulating them is using SSH. And when you use this open SSH tool, you know, we make a connection, we have a, a shell on the system, we can make files with make DRR, we can list them, and you know, we can create a public HTML folder and all these kinds of things. And if you just want to, you know, run GCC and run uh, different programs, you know, this way, uh, that's that's totally fine. Sometimes people like to edit their files locally and transfer them over. Um, that's another way that you could you could do things. So if you're if you're going to do it kind of all in the shell terminal in terms of creating and manipulating files, you'd want to use a text editor like VI, Nano, or Emacs. Um, but another way you could do this, another way you could do this is you could edit files locally with a text editor, and then you could then transfer them over with an SFTP program to the Pascal server, and then you know check out the files on the server that way. So I'll just show you that way as well. So if I want to use you know, a local editor to edit my files and then transfer them over with an FTP client, I'm going to need a text editor and an FTP client. One of the better text editors is Visual Studio Code. So if you just go into Google and type in Visual Studio Code, it's a good text editor by Microsoft. And if you go to download here and you go to Mac, because I'm on a Mac and we download it, it's a, it's a pretty good text editor that lets you, you know, edit whatever kind of files you need and it's got good syntax highlighting and it's pretty solid. And so I've, I've been using it for the last year. I really like it. There's some other good, good ones out there as well called like Adam and Sublime Text. But I'll run this here. I'll say open. And I'll, I'll drag it to applications actually to make sure it's installed. So I just dragged it to applications just to make sure it's all installed. But this is a text editor here. And I can edit files locally here. So if I wanted to make like a C file or something like that, I could say like number include sddio.h and I could say like int main and I could say printf, you know, hello world and return zero. And I could save this, you know, on my computer somewhere. I'm going to save it in the desktop folder. I'm going to make a folder called like um, 1xc3 and I'll save this file as like hello.c in there, right? And so here I'm like editing my file locally with Visual Studio Code, which a lot of times people find easier than using like VI or, or Emacs or Nano. Um, and so if I if I do it this way though, and I'm editing it locally, I need to get it to the server somehow. You could use SCP, the, the command line tool SCP to do that, but you could also use an F SFTP client or an FTP client to do that. Um, and there's a couple of good S F FTP clients out there. One that's for Mac is called Cyberduck. And this allows us to transfer files to our um, our server with sort of a graphical user interface way of doing it. Um, and so Cyberduck is a good one if you're on a Mac. So you just Google Cyberduck, go to download and download it. Um, and they're, they're apologizing for their ads there that they gave us. They said it takes money to, to write and distribute it. So, um, but you can go here, you can download Cyberduck. and just install that. So I'll just drag it to applications. Now, if I want to transfer then this file to my, my you know, uh, Pascal server here so I can see it, what I'd want to do is run that Cyberduck program. So again, if you go up here, you should be able to put in Cyberduck and it should come up or go to applications and it should come up. And then to connect to the server, I'll say open, uh, to connect to the server, whenever it does decide to open up, <laughs> you have to punch in your, your credentials basically. So you have to say, um, what, uh, oh, here it is there. There it is there. Cyberdex there. You have to punch in your credentials for the service. You have to give like the host name, your username, password. So I'll go to open connection and I'm going to change the protocol from FTP to SFTP because we're, we're connecting to this Pascal server, which uses encryption. So we're going to say SFTP for SSH file transfer. And then I'm going to say the server name, which in our case is going to be pascal.cas.mcmaster.ca. So pascal.cas.mcmaster.ca. You're going to have to put in your Mac ID here. You have to put in your password there, whatever your password is there. And then you can say connect. Say allow. 
And what you'll get here is what whatever you've got over here. So I've got public HTML there. I've got public HTML here. It's just a view, a, a graphical user interface view of, of what I've got here. Now I could transfer this file over this way. I could say like, okay, let's transfer over hello.c and say allow. And it'll transfer over that file to the server, right? And if I say ls, I see hello.c there now, right? And then if I wanted to compile that, I could say gcc hello or dash o hello hello.c and then that compiled it and now i've got like a hello file that i can run there and then i can say dot slash hello and i run my my script then i get hello world there right and this is one way that you could you could you know write your c programs and edit them and, and test them using the pascal servers use a text editor to write them locally transfer them over with the sfdp client and then from your terminal um compile them with gcc and run them this way and get your output. And this is this is one valid way of doing it. And this is in contrast to sort of using the the tools, you know, right on the command line, command line like Nano and Emacs and that. Now, there's one other way you can do this, and that other way you can do that is do this is that you can set up your editor such that your editor will actually automatically, or with your you know permission by giving some kind of action like uh, saving or whatever. Um, have your, your text editor automatically transfer those files over to the server for you. And so I'll just show you a way to do that next. So most modern text editors like Visual Studio Code support packages that allow you to extend the functionality of the text editor. And I'll show you how to do it with Visual Studio Code, but I believe other packages exist for Atom and Sublime Text and other common text editors. So if you go to code here and you go to preferences and extensions, you can search for and install extensions. If you type in SFTP and you go to this first one here where it says L-I-X-I-M-O-M-O, -O, so that one there, and you go to install, this installs a package that allows you to run essentially SFTP automatically and it'll, it'll save um, files for you automatically to the server if you configure it correctly. So to make this work though, you have to open up a, a folder and the folder becomes like your, your project workspace. Then once you open up the folder, then you run control shift P or command shift P on Mac to config a, a file that, that sets up how to do your connection. That says, here's my host, here's my username and, and what to do. So we'll open up a folder first. So I'm gonna say open and I'm gonna open up this folder here. I'm on my desktop. 1xc3, I'm gonna say open here. I'm not gonna click on a file, I'm on a folder here. I'm gonna click on open. Then this gives me like a, a workspace here where I can see the files here in that folder. And then from here, this is where you run the command shift P command. So command shift P. That'll bring up this sort of a terminal here and you type in SFTP colon config if it's not the first thing that comes up. So for me, I just used it. So you can just type in SFTP, you know, colon config and this will come up and just click on that one. When you click on that one, it'll create a folder that's invisible called dot VS code and has a file in here, sftp.json. You can edit this to have the, the, the Pascal server be the host, right? So if we say like name is Pascal and we say host is Pascal dot cast dot McMaster dot CA. And I say username is Brownie K and the remote path is the folder where any files you save in this folder are going to be mapped to that folder on the server. So if I say home slash brownie K, that's the folder I'm in here. So if I, I'm just going to clear here, that's the folder I'm on in Pascal, right? So if I say PWD, that's my folder there, slash home slash brownie K. And so that's why I'm putting that there, slash home slash brownie K. And then any files that I save here will be saved on the server in that, uh, in that path there. And so if I go to this hello world file here and I add in a slash N, so if I add in this slash N here, that wasn't there before, I'm going to put in slash N there. Then what will happen is if I save this, well, maybe I'll put in some other stuff. Say hello, hello world slash N. I'll be like, you know, a new file version here, a new file version. And I'll and I'll save this. So it's like a new, it's a clearly a new file here, right? I'll click on save. When I go to save it, it should now try to save it on the server here. Let's just make sure I didn't forget a step here. I'm gonna save this file. Oh, I don't think I saved this file. 
I didn't save this file, so it didn't work. So now I'm gonna, now that I made some, some changes here, I'm gonna say save. And when I go to save it now, I have to put in my password because it's gonna try to put it on the, the server there. So if I say my password here, it'll then connect to the survey to say done hello.c. That means it has transferred it to the server, right? If I look on the server now and I check out that file, I can see it's the new version there. It got transferred automatically, right? And if I were to you know, compile this one, I'll get the, the new hello program, right? That I can run. And so this is a tool that people like to use to make it very easy to, to edit their files and, and run them on the server, right? Because you can have like your terminal over here maybe where you're gonna be running things and you can have your text editor over here and then you've got a pretty cool setup to get work done, right? Because you can then say like, okay, um, I can make a new file here and we'll call this one like, I don't know, whatever we want. We'll just say, put in some other code here. We'll just say like some other file. So we'll say printf, you know, some other file. And I'll save this as some, or I'll just say some other file dot C and save it. Now, when I did that, it actually, because I've already put in my credentials, it actually automatically transferred it over. So if I say ls here, I see that I have some other file .c there, right? And then I can just say gcc uh, dash o some other file, some other file dot c. Um, oops, I got the name wrong. It looks like some other, oh, I forgot the o, some other file .c. So I could just run this command here. And I'm running the other file there now, right? So now what you can do is you can, you know, very easily coordinate between working on a nice, rich text editor on your own computer while compiling with GCC on Pascal or on whatever whatever other server you want to use because you could change this to, to whatever else and that's going to work too. Um, and so this is just a cool way to, to set up your environment to program. And I just thought I'd show you this as well. So you got three ways you can edit files. One is edit right on the server with like VI and, and Nano and Emacs and stuff like that. Another way you can do it is edit them locally with a text editor and use an SFDP program like Cyberduck and transfer them over that way. The other way you can do it is install a package for your text editor like I just showed you that will allow you to uh, automatically transfer files when you save them and create them to the server. So hopefully this helps you get an environment set up and, and use, your, use your Pascal server.